Now, in Luke chapter 15, Jesus, he tells three different parables back to back to back. He tells the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and then he tells the parable of the prodigal son. And all of these parables, all three, are essentially making the exact same point, but the parable of the prodigal son goes into much greater detail than the other two. And so what he's trying to do here is that you have three parables, but they're all making the same point. The question that we're going to be looking at is, what prompted Jesus to specifically give three different parables all addressing the same point? Okay, take a look at our text for today. This is Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 3. It says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And then Jesus told them this parable. Now, by the time we get to Luke chapter 15, Jesus had become a very popular person. So popular, in fact, right, that people were coming from all over just to meet him. And at this point... What they were surprised upon meeting him was, unlike the other prominent and important people of his day, Jesus was extremely accessible. For example, when Jesus would come into a town, he wouldn't roll up in a limo right outside the fanciest temple and get his his, his disciples to be his bodyguards and rush him up the stairs as the paparazzi's taking pictures and asking him questions. He wouldn't get up onto the stage in the temple, give a big speech, and then after he was done, Peter and John and the other disciples would whisk him out the back and get him to his limo so that they could get to his bachelor pad in Beverly Hills. Friends, Jesus had become important and prominent, but he didn't do those things. He wasn't selling tickets. He wasn't handing out VIP passes. He wasn't doing any of those things that you would expect. He was extremely accessible to people. And you know what? Not only accessible but he was also available. Remember earlier I asked you to think back to the, the, the people that you've met, the actors, the, the singers, the athletes, the local leaders. Chances are that you only got a few minutes or even a few seconds to meet with them. For example, Abigail, the, the princess she met, it was very accessible, but because of what was happening that day, she really wasn't all that available. She only had a few minutes that she could spare. You see, throughout Jesus' ministry, it was commonplace for him to spend an entire afternoon or an entire evening sitting around a table with people, strangers, and just eating with them and talking with them. I mean, friends, can you imagine for a moment what it would be like to sit at a table with Jesus? Like, can you imagine sitting outside at O'Maddy's with with Jesus and, and a couple of your friends and You order some appetizers, you get the buffalo shrimp or the chicken tenders, and you sit there for hours and hours looking out at the gulf, just enjoying time, and Jesus is sharing about his life, and you're sharing about your life, and it's like he has all the time in the world. You see, what made Jesus different than the other important and prominent people of his day was that he was extremely accessible, but he was also extremely available. And you know what? Let's not stop there. Notice who Jesus was accessible and available to. It wasn't the elites. It wasn't the media. It wasn't the big wigs of his day. Who does Luke say that Jesus was meeting with? Tax collectors and sinners. Now, friends, I don't know about you, but I don't wake up in the morning thinking, hey, you know what? I'd really like to get lunch with the IRS today. (laughs) Well, friends, Jesus did that all the time, right? Right? And these tax collectors back then, man, they were way worse than the IRS today because not only did they collect taxes for Rome, but remember, they would take some extra off the top. They would make you pay more than what you needed so that they could fill their own pockets. I mean, these were dishonest people. Tax collectors were not the kind of people that you wanted to associate yourself with. And so you had these tax collectors, then you had the sinners, right? Now, it's important to note here that Luke himself is not saying that these people are sinners. Rather, he's using the term that the religious leaders used about these people back then. And the reason the religious leaders would call them sinners was because they wanted other people to make sure that they knew that they themselves were not sinners. Hey, I I study God's word. (laughs) I go to the temple. I give to the temple. I worship at the temple. I stand on the street corners and pray. I mean, come on. You want to talk about sinners? That's them. That's not me. They're the sinners. But friends, as Luke is writing this, he knows the truth. 
He knows that the quote-unquote sinners are not the only sinners, but rather it's also the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, even Luke himself. All of them and all of us are sinners. That's why Jesus came, right? To save all of us from our sins. 